snow, depression, and unimaginable savagery? Are we going back to Siberia? Nope, we are coming back to a quest right war. And this time with a new update of Bears and Bandits. We have a new focuser to play. Now you might ask, why would I play some random, backward, snowy wasteland? Well first, you know me, I just love to go and play in Siberia and in warlord states that only have a few million population. But the second reason is because with this nation you can launch a crusade against the world and you can restore Hyperborea, which makes it an ideal nation to play for me. And as you can see, our country is very great in size. It is absolutely not surrounded by potential enemies stronger than us on every single side possible and an unimaginably high 3 million citizens to its name. Also, while I was just looking uh, through the portraits and names of all these countries over here, I noticed something very interesting and so you see how there is this breakaway state, the Prywinian Liberation Army. Can you see the name? Partidul Comunist Privenian. Why the hell is the name of this party in Romanian? Oh my god, bro. Oh hell no, man. What the fuck, man? And today we are going to be playing the polar bear communities, which are just doing wonderfully. As you can see, they have a lot of land and resources and influence on this continent. Yeah, this is a lot of reading. To keep it short, in this time long ago, long ago, you know how it goes. In a long time ago, before there was what you could even call Earth, there was the a realm of spirit and material in the blessed primordial core and then we were just beasts with no mind or ability to think and dream but our old father our great ancestors gave us and blessed us with the ability to forge great empires of ur science and dominate the food chain now there are those uh, pony scholars that claim that they are historically proven warmer climate records and ruins of ancient pony settlements in our lands. But um, we have claws, they don't. I think that's a pretty good argument. Now that we shut them up, we will continue by saying that in the next age, that of star steel, we move from being nomadic tribes to selling down into the territories that we now own and consolidated being taught by great beasts such as the boar Galibustri and the Darul Fenrin and the nameless Great Raven. The stupid ponies laugh at us because they claim we follow this stupid mythology in our modern day. But we know better. Many of us still feel the kinship with the countless wild beasts that roam the north still and that have the frozen bark in our hearts and souls. Just like the penguins with which we wish to unite with because look at this we have good relations with them we like them now our land might look united internationally but inside it is deeply divided we have arrogant warriors fortress lords penguin majority fishers but even with all of these dozens of small clans there are three major ones that have far more resources and power than any of the other lesser clans. The Harmonist of all Sung, the Warrior Scholars of Svarpels, and the currently ruling Skyfling, Paul Wellington being part of Clan Skyfling. Just seven years ago, our lands were completely disunited by all of these clans. But in the year 1000, this handsome fellow over here, Paul Wellington, look at this admiral, using imported Gryphonian rifles and mercenaries, managed in two years to conquer and unify all of the clans to form a modern nation state. Every clan save for two. These two over here, which I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the name of, which were exiled into the changeling lands for trying to collaborate with the changelings over here, the bastards. Now for the last five years, Bo Wellington has tried to modernize the nation. As you might uh, guess, taking a backwards tribal clan based frozen wasteland with no industry and trying to modernize and industrialize it is uh, pretty expensive and difficult. This is why now, after five years of attempted reforms, we find that we need to review our budget and try centralizing and getting more money into the coffers. Because the issue will need to be forced, there can no longer be disunity in the way that our nation is ruled, there can no longer be uncertainty on what the course and the destiny of the polar bear nation is. 
a course must be set and then follow through. And Paul Wellington will make sure to make the polar bears great again and to bring them to glory once more. And for that, any measures will be taken. Now it is time to centralize the realm and deal with our budget problems. Our army is actually pretty good. Panzerbione divisions. So we have some unique divisions over here that uh, we can use. Uh, well, I love that I just, for some reason, just love to play countries in cold wastelands. Whether it is Siberia, Skynavia over here last time, or the polar bear communities. I just love to play frozen wastelands that only have, um, you know, 3.2 million manpower. While um, the changelings and um, the equestrians both have 60 million pony power each. Oh, and of course, the usual 2 slots and minus 50% research speeds. <laughs> Why would it not be like this? Bolt action rifle. Look at, look at this. Oh lord. As mentioned before, our lands over here also have a lot of polar bears and wolves and penguins and also just wandering bears that don't really have that much of a consciousness but are happy to follow, really. Oh, I really like these, like we can put, uh, I think, two general wolves in charge of our armies. Now we are currently paying our debts to the griffins because those rifles weren't cheap to purchase. Our clans are divided since they cannot agree on pretty much anything and so the next few years will be quite um, difficult to cross. It has been pretty much our tradition to just exile the outcasts and criminals and eccentrics from our land but this has led us to lose a lot of brilliant minds that could have helped us. But the good thing is that the polar bears have a very high sense of honor and they would rather die than give up their honor. Oh the tribes are not happy when I'm trying to centralize land, let me tell you they're not happy at all. I took um, this focus on over here to try and unify our scientific efforts and to spread knowledge. Uh, yeah, the, the scribes do not like that and because of that we get instead of a bonus 5% research speed we get a minus 5% research speed. We tried to get um, the fish farms to centralize them, to nationalize them in order to, gain, in order to improve the national budget and they burn them down because they don't want us to have them. We tried to unify the army to get more manpower well, they are now actively working against that. And since they didn't want to play nice, we just took what we needed. Now, it is time to move on to the question of the outcasts. What the hell do we do with that? Maybe the exiles are the only ones who can truly see what needs to be done. And our efforts to unify the lands get even worse. We have 75% consumer goods, we don't even have a factory. At, at least we get early small designs? Okay, at least we get some planes. You know what I say we bring all of them in, screw it. We cannot allow such petty ideas to divide us. We must be united as brethren. Oh, and it seems like the other clans are not happy with what we are doing. But Paul Wellington right here, look at him. Will do what must be done and save the polar bears. Oh, and our country is demilitarized. How nice. And just like usual, the world in um, Griffonia and Equestria and pretty much everywhere is going to hell. You have rebellions and civil wars and whatnot literally everywhere. We will not yield and we will not surrender. Damn straight. <laughs> oh, this will not end well for me, will it? Now we'll destroy their fortresses, get new allies, restore the destroyed fish farms and finally reclaim the northwest. Yeah, our society is not doing too well. We have a small science basis, we are an industrializing society, so we are like in the 1800s right now. We have some illiteracy, but not that much, I should expect that more. Poverty is negligible. Uh, excuse me, how is poverty negligible when we're in the north and we have 10 factories? And also, we are of course the polar bear race majority. And remember, only you can prevent forest fires. That's nice. With the rise of unrest in the country, new spectacular generals have reared their heads, ready to serve under our glorious leader. Look at this strong boy. <laughs> Alright, now where the hell is my Putin running a bear general? I want him. Now we will march west and take the eastern lake states. Our divisions are prepared. Now we will turn our gaze east and avoid for now engaging the triple alliance on Lantir. 
And also I just noticed that our field marshal Bard of the Waste, that's an awesome name by the way, gets logistics wizard in this area, yes please, I already love him. The greatest of our sins, brutalized state, oh my god, minus 150,000 pony power, uh oh, <laughs> whoops, I guess that's what happens when you revolt guys, this state used to have more than a million population, whoops. Now we took the east and literally all the factories are damaged. Uh oh. <laughs> now let's turn our gaze south and deal with what remains in Onlantia now that we have surrounded them. These polar bears to the south are traitors to our nations. They committed treason against the state. And thus they leave us no choice but to begin by destroying Clan Kane. Another 50,000 deaths, destroying uh, Clan Gotlund, another 50,000, and destroying Clan Rosenkrantz, eliminating all resistance and leading to about 150,000 further casualties in the south. Now we can secure it, prepare for the final push in what remains of the high mountains in the east. You know what, let's do a 2 for 1 deal. Let's deal with the Clan Volsungur and Svartpels at the same time. And we will proceed by bombarding the mountain forts in the south mountains. 150,000 in a state that only has 280,000. We butchered half the population, let's go. And also, this time their thunder and magic will not save them. This time their forts will fall and falter. 150,000, how many people live here? That is like 20% of population just gone. Boom. Now that we have secured the entire country successfully, we can declare our victory to the world. And our great unifying army will hold a great parade in our city. Hmm. Yeah, we, ca we kind of just lost like a fifth of our population. Whatever. Now we get a new focus tree. The Great Reconqueror. We have won through blood and iron, through ice and fury, victory, the final and total victory is finally ours. From now on nobody will dare to question the might and will of the great reconqueror of the Ursine. Now the transformation of our state into a modern power can begin. Now we are Clan Skyfling. What man, why are you defeatist? You literally just won, you're okay. Hmm, worrying reports are starting to appear. But we will make sure that the clan's lands are now secured. Now it's time to bring forth those few loyal and living that endure. Oh, what's that? You want to raid us? I don't think so. Get the hell away. Go away, Griffon invaders. Strong boy is leading the charge against our enemies. And they shall not win. We won. And the enemy raiding party has been hit hard and pushed back. But that was actually one hell of a battle because they just kept attacking. Like I'm lacking a thousand guns. Look at their strength now on both sides. These divisions lost a lot of strength. The good part is that they also gained a lot of veterancy from these brutal extended fights. Oh nev never mind it was way worse for them. We lost 780 pony power they lost 15,000. We definitely want them and show them who's boss around here. Now how will we deal with the desert lands of Svartpels that were particularly ravaged during our campaigns? These lands may be abandoned, but we will not dishonor the legacy of our fallen brothers by abandoning these lands. We will hold on to them till our last breath. Now we will repopulate the desolate north provinces and build a mighty wall over what remains of the rubble. And it's time we open the collapsed mines. And it looks like the changelings are having just a wonderful time in Olenia. Oh and they just straight up annex them, alright. Alright changelings, I see. Should I hire a cult leader for the government? Sure I don't see what could possibly go wrong really. Now it is time to move and spread out our people. In a distant past we roamed as nomads in great tribes. With the falling of our numbers, it seems like we have no other option but to revert to roaming among our vast lands if we wish to hold them. We will endure more. Now let us return to our nomadic roots. We will strip down all the haunted fortresses and rip out any metal and bone we can use to fight. This role does not tolerate the weakness and we cannot tolerate ourselves to look weak. We must loot the land to kill. And in our ensuing crusade, 
we will be joined with beasts that now march with our warbands and treat us as their own king. Now he emerges. Yet, why only now? And the Eternal emerges. Oh lord. It was hard to say when the shift truly started. Was it when he became convinced they needed to hold all that empty land? Was it when the bear troops started growing even more mad and brutal than was accepted even by their monstrous society in attempts to ensure no griffin, changeling or any other enemy warlord or adventurer could take their land? Was it? when it seemed that every abomination, unhinged lunatic, bloodthirsty maniac and every monster under the frozen sun started to seek out and join their armies? Was it when that was allowed or became encouraged? Or perhaps it was happening all during this time? What was left was bloodlust and desire for war, both seemingly increasing with time. Even over tyrant Jorik of clan Skyfling felt himself succumbing to desire for war and vengeance against the world. The only thing that kept him away from committing to such madness was fear and dread of just how much greater the armies of every other state were. Such was until the darkness which spawned this anger within bears emerged. The Eternal. The great abomination confronted the Overturn, yet seemingly not to break him before all and proclaim himself it. No. Rather, it merely spoke. No warlord or warriors was allowed to hear what was spoken between Tyrant and Monster. Yet when over Tyrant Jorik of Clan Skyfling emerged, shadowed by the Eternal, he was greatly reinvigorated. And as he marched through the Great Fortress, barking orders at the warlords and warriors alike, a war cry started spreading, one that tapped into all the bloodlust that had accumulated within the warriors. And the monsters shall march across the world again. Now you'll get the Eternal to join our army. A polar bear-like monstrosity with six limbs and covered in shaggy white fur. Its great mouth is filled with wicked and sharp teeth with two great fangs that could pierce skulls at the front. Now we shall too be joined by the forces of the shadows as the slaves of the darkness march. We will feed their need for bloodlust. Our forces may be overextended, but we need more land. We can take more. We shall take more land. It's time to move south and destroy the Yaks before they have a chance to do so against us. Lord Yorick of the Endless Wastes shall lead us to glory. We will also prepare to declare war on the Kingdom of Pingland. Cowards. Cowards, I tell you. Now it is time to go to war. Now we have successfully encircled some of their divisions and we will kill each and every single last one of them. Yes, we are just sweeping them away. Changeling oil demands. Interesting. You know what? We can provide. We can collaborate. This time I rushed in and managed to take all of Yakaristan. And we are promptly going to take all of the land. Now we declare war on Virgilia. Full offensive. And there you go. That was actually way quicker than I thought it would be. Endless wastes, yes! Oh, the, this is what a good decision looks like. I mentioned this in other episodes, but trade with Skyfall. 400 political power, which is a lot of political power, you know. What do I get? What would make me want to get this? A production efficiency cap? Less consumer goods? That is really good. I will absolutely take it. That is a good decision. Come back when you are a little mm, richer. Oh, so you don't want to engage in trade with us because of because we're poor? Very funny. Man, these technologies are so fun. Look, production efficiency, production efficiency output, supply grace, supply range. Oh, this is so good. And the great war between the changelings and the equestrians has just started. That means that our border is pretty much secure. With this development, we will move to take out Nova Griffonia with the occasion that this gives us. Now let's go. Full offensive everywhere. The changelings are pushing hard on the questions, but they have already mobilized most of their militias and are starting to slow the changeling advance. But we are waiting and we will strike at the opportune moment for the changelings are the biggest threat and we just need to wait for the right moment. Our armies continues to expand. 
The next on our list of conquests is the Republic of Noga Griffonia and their puppeteers in Stalingrad. Now we are engaged in a massive war in the east. The changelings are halted, so thankfully they will be grinded down. Meanwhile, we are fighting in the north against Stalingrad and Nova Griffonia. <laughs> At this point I've managed to basically grind down their army to the point where they cannot launch offensives anymore. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just launching localized offensives on this tile over here and I'm currently just hitting their divisions over and over until they run out of equipment. Grinding down their divisions like look this is how I do it I just wait for divisions to come in they instantly get clicked and they suffer thousands of casualties yeah they lose like 600 manpower 500 manpower and now they are at 350,000 at this point I don't think they really have that much equipment left and I'm just continuing to grind down the their divisions at this point we are still around 200,000 casualties they are continuing to climb yep we're pushing through we captured the supply hub that's important. Oh, this is gonna be a big encirclement. The last few months have been an absolute disaster for Stalingrad. Uh, yeah, the changelings are getting defeated by the equestrians. Uh, whatever. Stalingrad is currently getting its teeth kicked in. And that is another massive encirclement for them. Yeah, the, their armies are just completely gone. Now I'm just able to completely push them out. And I'm gonna get all those sweet, sweet factories. Now, our game begins. Because we have finally defeated the communists. And now we have control of all of the Northwest. Unfortunately, Equestria has defeated the Changelings. And they have a pretty big army. I also have a big army, but um, I think it would be better if we went, for example, to invade Vedina. Yep, let's declare war on Vedina. We're going. Now we have 100 factories, let's go! Now we can just annex Vedina and their navy as well. Might as well just go and conquer another continent in the meantime. Look at my beautiful division time creating. Look at this beauty. This is the ultimate destroyer of nations. We're declaring war on Griffonia. They just declared like a ton of wars. We're going after them. We are going. Right now. We are, and we are obliterating them. Their divisions just blow against ours. The more land we capture, the more industry we get, the stronger we get. And also the more ponies and griffons and whatever join our army. We are on all adult service. We are just going. We are not stopping. Oh, they're just collapsing. I lost so far 60,000. Just 60,000 and they lost to me already 330,000. Oh, this is so good. This is just encirclement after encirclement. Look at this. Just, I'm just gonna launch small encirclements. I'm just gonna encircle these two tank divisions over here and... Yep, that's another two divisions encircled. This is going so good. They don't have divisions on the front anymore. Oh my god, they, they, they cannot stop me. They cannot. They have nothing. They have like 50 divisions left. Let's go. Ah! My front is so sparse. I have no divisions like on a white front. I, I just need the divisions from the north to like arrive over here already. Yeah, they suffered 1.1 million casualties to me. 142,000. This is, this is, went really, really well. I already took like a fifth of Griffonia. This is, this is so good. Now we will annex all of them. Wing Bardi, I'm coming for that ass. Right now. Build the Horde Air Force. Yes. Wing Bardi, let's go. Ah, uh, look at these encirclements. So many deaths, let's go. We lost 77, they lost 900,000. I'm just having fun with my army, just killing people around the world. Launch the mega offensive now. The mega offensive. I have 800,000 manpower instantly just because I get access to more non-core manpower. The Socialist Union of AV, 2.5 million casualties in about 4 months. And I'm also just building like the Horde Super Railway to get supply everywhere. This will be our road to Equus. <laughs> Look at his division, it has like 1% strength. I guess that's what happens when you get pushed like across the continent. Oh my god, what is this? Roaman Kaiserate. What is that? Oh my god, why? What is Altu Keksa doing over here? 
Oh my god. Idealistic poets, screw you game. Now we declare war on the river coalition. They're not even united yet. All of them are encircled. Yes. We just encircled and killed 2 million of their troops and lost only 144,000. This is getting ridiculous. Time for another massive offensive. This time we're not stopping until we take everything. And of course the game just decides to auto save when I decide to speak. Oh, they, they just capitulated. I guess I took enough of their land. And because we just annexed them, we get another million manpower. More divisions. M we need more divisions. The construction of the super railway is also going splendidly. Look at all that green supply. We're just spamming out division and I'm just gonna spam airports everywhere. For my ever increasing horde air force. 3.3 million, yes! There's also a massive war in the in North Zebrica. I literally have all of my lands on harsh quotas and I'm just taking all of the factories and I'm just building a massive horde army to invade the Questra and if I heard that the developers of this mod hired like furry artists like draw all these uh, generals and marshals I would not be surprised at all. Damn! The Zonic Republic, Car Cartagia or whatever is massive. This is really nice. Look at this. The bad enslaver and the good enslaver working together for their benefit. Okay, I just randomly clicked on this country. What the hell? What the hell is this? Hollow Knight looking ass over here. Who is this? Now we can declare war on Equestria. We are gonna be facing uh, just a few million troops. You know what? We're not waiting. Just being offensives. Yes, just make another encirclement here and also here and bring in more divisions. Cut these divisions here. It's been like two months and uh, I probably already lost like a thousand convoys already. All these delicious casualties. Yeah, air superiority, not even contesting. Do you like this? Do you like this image? Does it give you anxiety? Does it give you depression looking at this? It sure does for me. Let's go. Whoa, 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 don't take Canterlot, don't take Canterlot. Let this be a great moment for our horde. Atomic bombing of Canterlot, you're damn right. It's a small detail, but the Crystal City is divided into four sectors with uh, the Crystal City Center. That is an absolutely amazing detail. Like, it's so small, but I just really like it. I can, I can literally just encircle the center of the city and then storm it. Nine million casualties. And now Las Pegasus falls. And with it, Equestria should capitulate. Nope, false alarm, they don't. Because Equestria is the Soviet Union plus America. It has infinite industry and manpower. Even with only this remaining, they still have like 700,000 manpower. Equestria has capitulated, now it Ares remains. Now all of Equus stands under our rule. Oh, just look at our beautiful empire. It was on the night of July 25th, 1019, when Lord Yorick was told that the last cells of Pony and Changeling resistance were vanquished by his armies. Even with all his enemies slain and the blood of tens of millions shed, his bloodlust still pushed him further to the continent down under, Zebrica, where the Chiropterans and Colthaginians consolidated control of the north. Both countries allied together, but he could not do it straight away. During his campaigns, a meritocratic military voting system had developed. There, the top generals of Lord York's army would gather to vote on the actions of the empire. Most became tired during York's campaigns, with mutters of unrest slowly beginning to rise. The generals and military leaders believed that, with the conquest of Equestria, they could focus on consolidating what they already had. Finding himself in disagreement with almost all of his generals, Lord Yorick decided to resolve the unrest that had been brewing in his inner circle by convening his highest generals and confidants in his private log cabin south of Kairfuglavita to discuss future actions. The generals and the Lord himself gathered on the night of the 26th during a freezing blizzard. From here, we only have one source for what happened that night. The soldier stationed to protect the front entrance to the log cabin, Björn Gunnar. According to his testimony, the Ursans inside very quickly started shouting and screaming at each other, so loudly in fact, 
that he could understand something said inside. To quote, I could hear one massive, terrifying voice shouting from the inside, decrying, Do you not understand, you fools? The only thing keeping that army of bandits and murderers from turning against us is giving them further enemies to slay. I'm the only one they will listen to. Without me, you are all nothing. Suddenly, I heard several soldiers barging into the room and several of Yorick's allies being gunned down. I immediately realized the danger and hid in the forest vegetation close to the cabin. The door swung open, and I saw seven soldiers dragging Lord Yorick away while he was fighting them with all his might, followed by a group of twenty generals and confidants. They headed southeast higher into the mountains, and after an hour the group returned in front of the cabin. There, the seven soldiers were all lined up and shot by the chief of army, Elof the White, and buried ceremoniously with massive stone crosses on their graves. The Ursines hugged, shook hands, and went their way after agreeing on how to split the empire, and most importantly, to never speak of Lord Yorick ever again. Since then, there have been several thousands who have tried finding Lord Yorick's remains, but there have been no signs that we know of, with his body having likely been thrown in the deep snowy forests of the mountain, the local fauna having probably consumed or spread out Yorick's last remains within a year. As for the Ursins present during his deposition, all of them stayed silent about this event, keeping quiet or killing themselves to avoid interrogation. This month, the Barian Constitutional Republic is celebrating its 15th year of unification on the eve of this new year, 1096. I have visited the nation, and as ironic as it may be, they don't call it the Northern Star of Freedom on top of the world for no reason compared to its southern neighbors. The nation is one of the most developed and free. The reason I decided to hold this lecture today is that tomorrow, 57 nations that have been at one point or another in their history, conquered and plundered by the conqueror of the world, are signing a common letter at the United Nations, demanding that the Bear Nation apologize for its past crimes and pay reparations to the affected countries or face sanctions. In response, the Prime Minister denounced this as an attempt to slander the history and culture of the Barian Republic and its citizens. The most zealous diplomats were from the Second Equestrian People's Republic, and its ally, the Confederation of Four Hives, the Fifth Northern Hive, as you are aware of, having been burned down almost 80 years ago, who reminded the onlookers that the occupation of their homelands was by far the most brutal, with some regions wholly devoid of life and most still having not recovered even to this day. These nations are also plagued by corruption and instability to an unparalleled extent. For its part, the Barian Republic has had a difficult time gestioning with its past, Unlike the Mad Queen Chrysalis, which is universally seen in the hives as a genocidal dictator that led an unwinnable war of annihilation and brought their nation to ruin, Lord Yorick has a controversial reputation. The older generations, some elders even having seen the empire first paw, tell of Yorick as, if unnecessarily cruel and effective leader nonetheless, that brought Ursine kind to unparalleled power and prestige in the world, mentioning that due to his programs of depopulation, displacement, and land grants to poor bear citizens in the late 1010s, both the homeland and population of Ursine kind had grown massively in the last eight decades. The borders of the modern nation extending hundreds of kilometers in all directions, in what were once changeling, pony, and yak lands, with the population of bears expected to pass 30 million by the turn of the century. Meanwhile, the new generations, having been born in a globalizing and interconnected world, being taught in schools the history of their nation, wish to repay for it, and the first step they say, on a long road of recovery, is to apologize to the international community for the past crimes of their nation, and to recognize Yorick for what he is, in their words, a genocidal mad bear that teared two continents to sunder and led to the deaths of 43 million creatures. As Colthaginia's young generation, you need to be aware of the history of not only your nation, but also of the outside world so that you can be informed in your actions in our ever-interconnecting world. We may never know what happened to the Mad Lord, but perhaps it is for the better, so that the world may forget and heal its wounds. Uh, sir, I have myself full confidence that if all do their duty, if nothing is neglected, and if the best arrangements are made, as they are being made, we should prove ourselves once more able to defend our island home, to ride out the storm of war, and to outlive the menace of tyranny, if 
Republic linked together in their cause and in their need will defend to the death their native soil, aiding each other like good comrades to the utmost of their strength. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island. Whatever they can't play with, we shall fight on the beaches, we shall fight on the landing grounds, we shall fight in the fields and in the streets, we shall fight in the hills, we shall never surrender. And if, which I do not for a moment believe, this island or large part of it were subjugated and starving, then our empire beyond the seas and guarded by the British fleet, would carry on the struggle until in God's good time the new world with all its power and might steps forth to the 